So, how does ultra wideband work? We have two different main files that we're going to talk about briefly. Um, just going to touch on Mac uh, channel access and frame formats. I'm not going to dive deep on that because I don't have the time to, unfortunately. And then I'll talk about some ranging and localization uh, methods and things like that. So. This particular image is probably familiar to you. You've probably seen the classification of networks based um, on spatial scope. Now, where do you think ultra wideband fits? That's where ultra wideband fits. Anywhere from nanoscale up to personal area network scale. It's designed to be in close proximity, hence because of the low power spectral density that it operates at and the, and the really wide bandwidth. It is designed for very short range uh, communications and measurements. Now, the 802.15.6 wireless body area networks, that's where ultra wideband sort of fits in that closer proximity with sensors and things in or inside your body, um, which will be kind of interesting, might scare some people, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, if we look at the spectrum and what we're used to uh, operating in the Wi-Fi and the wireless world, uh, just consider a no noise floor across here and uh, GPS, high power, very narrow bandwidth, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Bluetooth operates in 2.4, we know that, 5 gigahertz, Wi-Fi, things like that. This is where ultra wideband operates. This is a representation, very wide bandwidth, lots of different channels across 3.1 to 10.6 gigahertz, very, very low power. So if you think about, uh, you know, 25 to 100 milliwatts transmit power and Wi-Fi, ultra wideband is whisper quiet, very, very, very quiet. Just diving a bit deeper and separating the fires for ultra Wi-Fi, uh, ultra wideband. Uh, high rate fire is operating in these frequency bands. As I mentioned, there is some support for sub one gigahertz, hasn't really been implemented too much lately. Um, and then the low rate fire only occupies 6.2 to 9.2 gigahertz. Don't worry about zooming in on this. The key point about the channels and the bands is there's some low bands and high rate fire and some uh, high bands. There's mandatory channel support in each of those. So that's the one thing I want you to take away from that. Pulse radio. So we talked briefly, what is ultra wideband? It's basically using pulse radio. Now, pulse radio is doing these short pulses of large bandwidth, so short in terms of duration, um, and they're usually less than two nanoseconds. And then you can have pulse repetition rates, which uh, you know increase frequency of these pulses happening per second to give you better local localization accuracy, but also giving you higher data rates if you're using it for those purposes. Um, the low rate fire originally started as doing imaging and radar use cases, but now it's starting to develop more capabilities in terms of ranging, um, which is coming into the 15.4Z standard. Nice little snapshot of what a uh, less than two nanosecond pulse looks like from ultra wideband there for reference. 